to the afternoon session um, of the school. Um, I was just saying to Giovanni, uh, thank you so much for ordering the fantastic weather, very hot. And I asked him, please could you order from someone a little bit of a breeze <laughs> for tomorrow? And he said, he will see. <laughs> Anyway, I'm very pleased to um, welcome back uh, Silvio to the second um, part of his lectures on Tidal Evolution of Close-In Satellites and Exoplanets. Silvio. Thank you. Okay, so this is the title of the lecture today. is the vote of the Greek Tidal Theory. I will skip the, 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 the first slides because I have already showed them yesterday. Uh, I will anyway, talk something about this one, uh, where I list some recent theories of the Alaska tide. And why? If you have so beautiful theory as uh, Darby theory, why we need another one? The problem for a physicist is that Darwin theory is not satisfactory. Because you have seen, I have to introduce laps by hand in the equations. This is not physical first principles. So uh, what we would like was to uh, have a theory that's completely founded on physical laws and no more than that, okay, without any ad hoc. Okay, no dissipation functions, no legs, not, nothing included, not introduced arbitrarily in the equations. And the new theory that I am representing today, so the idea is to substitute the crooked about the legs by one physical law. And this physical law is the Newtonian ring that is here. You see, zeta is the, 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 the surface of the body, okay? And you have an equation with a derivative of z on the left-hand side and the z on the right-hand side. So you have a differential equation. So all other things that I will speak about this are merely uh, the, 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 the physics that we learn on the, the high school or at least in, in, in the first year of, of, of faculty. No, no ad hoc, no ad hoc in the world theory. If the results are not satisfactory, which, what is the idea? The idea is, okay, so let's substitute the, 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 the law. Let's take a more complex law. I told you that this law uh, may be obtained as an approximate solution of the, the Navier-Stokes equation. Okay, we can go back to the Navier-Stokes equation and to look for a more uh, for, a, for a better solution than this one. But once we choose a solution and we introduce it, we do no more. We do no more. No, no, no more hypothesis in the problem. And, this, and the idea here is, okay, if you have a cube full of honey, for instance. Okay, and you do this, what happens? It's exactly this. Okay, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, when you do this, okay, the level of the honey will be like that. But because of gravity, it will change, okay, just to become horizontal again. And from, okay, I, I turn like that, I force this motion. So it will do this and we will approach. Uh, approximate exponentially to the horizontal. This is exactly what happened in, 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 in the theory that has been shown here, with the difference that I don't, I don't have just one motion, okay, because the moon is moving around the hertz, the hertz is rotating, so it's like if I am rotating <coughs> like this with the glass. So the, the moon, the honey has to follow. Uh, at every moment to try to, uh, to, to, to reach the equilibrium solution. This is what, what makes, what is done with the, the, this, this equation. So, this is the equation. Okay, uh, in the equation there, 
rho is the equilibrium figure, so rho is the horizon, okay? But I am in a round world, so the horizon is, uh, uh, <coughs> is something close to an sphere. So it's a spheroid or an ellipsoid. So when I, so I, 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 I write rho, I take the equation for rho that comes from the, 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 the student of the uh, figure of equilibrium of celestial bodies, and I put it in the equation, and I get this equation. Look, this is a first order differential equation with constant coefficients. With a, with a right hand side, okay, with, uh, with a non, uh, with, it's not homogeneous, it has the force and terms. These terms depend of R. R is the distance from the moon to the earth. I am always supposing that I am on the earth when speaking about the, the, this problem. And V is the angle of position of the moon. It's the angle that the astronomers call true anomaly. Okay, we know these angles from the, 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 the suit of the, 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 the problem of two bodies. So I can substitute them by the, 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 the values given by the Kepler problem, and that equation, okay, uh, uh, and I can solve the equation. I, I, I am not reproducing every step, otherwise uh, it would be impossible to, to, to work, to, to, to explain. So, I, I substitute in the equation and I solve it. It's very easy to solve it because what I have, what I have is just a, is just a first order differential equation with constant coefficients. Okay? So I will have terms here in cosine or in sine. Okay? How, how a term in cosine uh, uh, is reproducing the solution of a differential of equation of this type? Okay. With another cosine, with the same argument, plus one phase, yeah? plus a constant. Not an arbitrary constant, but one that is perfectly determined from the, 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 the coefficients of the equation. This is what happened here. I will have all terms. So I, I, I decompose the terms. Here are the frequencies that appear. And I have this term sigma k that will be introduced in, in, in this equation. In fact, a, 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 an equation of this kind wasn't the basis of Darwin's hypothesis, okay? But I am not assuming here that sigma k is small. It is not, okay? It may be 45 degrees in, 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 for the principal angle. Uh, sigma k is just a constant given here. Arctangent of k times the mean motion plus the semi diurnal frequency divided by gamma. Divided by gamma, gamma is the, 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 the relaxation factor I use it in the Kripp equation. Well, the, these, these things that appear here are uh, usual functions using celestial mechanics to. to, to to write the, the expansion of the two-body problem in a more compact way, so don't worry about it. So <coughs> what, what you may look a little bit is this one, this term here. A constant exponential minus gamma t. Uh, just reminding a little bit from, from, uh, uh, from calculus one, from calculus two, Okay, uh, if I have a differential equation with constant coefficients, okay, uh, with a second member, okay, I have to take first an uh, the, the solution of the homogeneous equation. So I get rid of the second member, I put zero, and I get a, a general solution of the, 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 the homogeneous equation. Second, we add to the solution, to obtain it, one particular solution of the complete equation. And this is the rule that uh, you have learned by heart uh, at the right time years ago. This is what, what has been done here. And so what you see here is what I told about the honey. 
Okay, the only will try to, 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 to go to the horizontal and will go exponentially, okay, tending to the horizontal. He is being he goes faster at the beginning and then is low, is low, is low, the velocity tends to zero, but never reaches zero mathematically speaking. So I have this sorry, I have this term here. Okay, one explanation, one term that is the dumping of the equation towards the equilibrium. I will no more talk about this term in the in the in the in the sequence. Why? Because the solar system has uh, five billion years, so uh, these terms had the, no matter which is the problem we are studying. This term had the time to vanish completely. So, uh, except in some very particular cases where we can hope, uh, we, where some uh, uh, sudden events may have happened more recently, we forget this term. We look only to the periodical part. If, when I look at the periodical part, okay, <laughs> I will not enter in details, but this, this term here, it is in fact the equation of an ellipsoid. This is the equation of an ellipsoid. An ellipsoid that has uh, a certain uh, semi-axis, certain semi-axis, and again a certain orientation that we can compute. Just taking the equation and uh, work one minute and we get the, 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 the ellipsoids. So what I have here, there is a summation here, <coughs> is that I am summing a lot of ellipsoids, not exactly ellipsoids, a lot of ellipsoidal shells above the body. This is very, this is very practical because I have ellipsoidal uh, shells that are very thin uh, over one sphere. So it is very easy to compute which is the potential of the, the, these, these, these shells. Since they are very thin, I can take one plus one plus one plus one. I can, I can neglect high order terms and make it just a linear approximation. And when I do it, when I, I do it, I get the, the potential. So I get exactly the same problem as we discussed yesterday. Except that now the, 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 the potential in this side is the potential of one sphere plus the potential of a certain number of thin ellipsoidal shells, okay? The other difference is that now the, 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 there, the legs were introduced by hand and they were assumed to be small and we could make a Taylor expansion with respect to them. Here, they are not at all arbitrary, they are fixed by the problem and they are not small, I cannot, I cannot perform, uh, I cannot do a, a Taylor expansion. So I will have the potential written like that. So the continuation is very easy. Exactly with physics one. Force equal minus mass gradient of the potential. Uh, times V in this case. No, uh, there is an error, this V. This V does not exist times minus m times gradient of the potential. So I am using very elementary law, very elementary physics to, to obtain a t. In the original formula, here is, was the work. This is why there is times v here. But uh, I, 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 I put something here to hidden the w and put the f in place, but I forgot to hiding also the, 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 the V in the, in the right hand side. So the force is very easy to calculate. So I have the, I have the surface of the body obtained directly from the integration of the clip equation. I, 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 can, I have the, 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 the potential immediately and I take the gradient of the potential and I have the force, and <coughs> having the force, I make the cross product <laughs> by the distance, and I get the, the, the torque. So I have the complete uh, structure of the problem 
already written here in these two or three slides. Okay? Now, so let us look a little bit at this function, the moment, the torque. Okay, you know that the torque uh, is equal to the moment of inertia times the derivative of the angular velocity. So I have a differential equation for the angular velocity. I forgot reading here, so I am telling you. <coughs> so I have, and, yeah, and the equation then becomes like this. New is the, uh, uh, okay, instead of putting here the derivative of the angular velocity omega, it is usual in this case to substitute it by, by, a, by a fundamental frequency of the problem that is two times omega minus two times the mean motion. So instead of having omega dot, I have here knee dot, the difference is that I have to put a two, uh, uh, divide by two because it is two omega minus two a. Okay, so I have a, a, an equation, differen a differential equation. And we have to pay attention with this differential equation. Usually, in several theories, this is solved very quickly. Okay? We just put an integral here and the uh, go. But we cannot do it. Why? Remember that we have here this angle sigma k that has been introduced by the solution of the differential equation. This quantity sigma k has been introduced by the solution of the differential equation. When solving the differential equation, this, this quantity appeared uh, uh, exactly. Well, but this quantity uh, taking sinus 2 times sigma k is 2 gamma times nu, blah, 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 gamma squared plus nu, blah, 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 squared. So I have nu here. Okay? I have nu here. So I cannot just make an integration looking at this as if, as if nu was a constant and just make an integration. I cannot do it because I have in the second hand side the 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 the, 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 the now, uh, is in the in, in the right hand side of the the the, the problem. So uh, it's not easy to solve this equation, and we do it numerically. Uh, we are interested in solution more than any other thing. So let's let's, let's study a little bit the solution of that equation. Well, since this is an equation of the first order, uh, it's enough to put a, 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 to plot, for instance, the derivative with respect to the, 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 the variable. So here I have the derivative, and here I have the angle. So I can, uh, this is to show, not that this is not the integration, this is to show what is expect from the integration. Uh, oh. So, this is zero. So, above this axis, above this axis, the, the derivative is positive. Below the axis, the derivative is negative. So, if I am in this point, if I have this frequency here, okay, the derivative is positive, so the system will evolve to the right. But if I am here, okay, the derivative is negative, the system will evolve to the left. So I can say that here, oh, let's show here, it's more, more like, uh, coincides with the origin because it is eccentricity equal to zero. But if I take a, a system eccentricity 0 0.3, I, see, I, I better see the things. So this point here is an stable equilibrium of the system. So I see that the system has an unstable equilibrium. Because if I go to the left, the derivative is positive. If I go to the right, the derivative is negative. I have an unstable solution. Look, uh, in this case, the eccentricity is 0 0.5. So it's more easy to see. OK, I'm seeing the offset here. But it's more it's easy to see the offset here. And when we compute this offset, in this derivative. What we found, find, is exactly the same result that we have shown yesterday in Darwin's theory. The equilibrium does not happen 
with omega equal to n, but omega equal to n plus 6 n e squared. So the, 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 the equilibrium solution is not an equilibrium solution with, uh, in, in which the, 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 the angular velocity is equal to the mean motion, but it is super synchronous. It is a little bit faster. It is a little bit faster. And how much? Exactly what is predicted by uh, Darwin's theory. Caution. Two things that I have not yet told, but I told now. This plot were done for gamma much larger than n. Re re you remind of the table that I have shown yesterday uh, with the value of gamma, of the relaxation factor for stiff bodies, 10 to minus 7, 10 to minus 8, and for gaseous bodies. 10, 20, 100, so uh, big numbers. So I am in this case in which gamma is a big number. So gamma is much larger than the mean motion. This is what happened with the stars. This is what happened with the hot Jupiters. Okay, this is what happened with the, the, the giant planets of our solar system in general. Well, what happens if I, if, I, if I change gamma? Okay, I will take gamma larger than n, but not so, not too much larger than n. Ah, okay, uh, the next figure, let, I will take already gamma close to n. Gamma and n are, are the numbers uh, of same order of magnitude. I have the same figures, but Instead of having a, a straight line here, I have a, a more complicated one. But the phenomenon is the same. The derivative is positive on the left, is negative on the right, and we have an equilibrium point which is displaced towards uh, supersynchronous <coughs> rotations. Let us continue the game. Let's take gamma still smaller. Now I will take gamma. Uh, example, distant satellites, Mercury. When I do this, what I see is that, okay, here is very similar to that one, okay, but when the eccentricity becomes larger, the figure changes completely. She's, the, the figure starts crossing the, the, the horizontal axis many times. So, I will have, okay, the, this solution is stable, the other one here is unstable, the next one is stable, the next crossing is unstable, the next cross is stable, and so on. Okay, so when I have, and this now it's completely different of Darwin, of Darwin theory, in Darwin theory this no longer, no longer occurs. What we see here is that I have solutions. Ah, if we, if we look at the position of them, we, what, what, what you have here is the, the semi diurnal frequency. The solution are the stable ones. At n equal to n is the origin. n equal to 2n is the second one. n equal to 3n is the third one, and so on. The, the solutions are such that the, 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 oh, sorry, here is new, not n. Uh, problems of transfer from one computer to the other, it changes the fonts. Okay, so new equal to n to n to n, etc. So I have the possibility of having solutions different of the. the, the. See, in the other one, the only equilibrium solution is the, the stationary, is the, 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 the synchronous or quasi synchronous. Now, though, no, I have some ones. And this one here. Is exactly what happens with Mercury. Mercury is in a resonance, uh, the, the rotation of the Mercury uh, is in resonance with the orbital motion of Mercury. Mercury gives, makes an orbit around the sun, the sun in about 80, 80 days, and third around itself in 56 days. So exactly two thirds. So uh, <coughs> We say that we, we have a, a kind of capture uh, of Mercury in a resonance, and this resonance is 3 to 2. 
important for, for people that work uh, with spin orbit. I, am, I have not assumed any triaxiality in the body. I am taking a body that is a sphere that is so, uh, being, uh, being uh, influenced by the attraction of another body. Okay? There are no, no uh, uh, triaxialities, permanent triaxialities in the court. So, so, I do not have all spin orbit resonances that we obtain when we study the spin orbit dynamics. I have just these ones. Okay, I will show the, the next figure to complete, this, to complete this sentence better. I have this one with one half, the synchronous, three to two, five to two, seven to two, etc. Sorry, n is over two, n, three n over two, four n over two, so those two n, five n over two, etc., etc. Yes, if you go back to the previous slide, um, the eccentricity of Mercury is about 0 0.2. Sorry? The eccentricity of Mercury is uh, 0 0.2. 0 0.2056. Zero okay? So it's zero, 0 0.2. So do you, do you get uh, the 3 to 2 resonance? Yes, I, I, yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. No, no. This, this is not for Mercury. This, this here is for N uh, gamma N divided by 10. Uh, Mercury is close to this, but Mercury is not exactly this value of gamma. Okay. Uh, in the fact, we do the, uh, we do the converse. We look for the, 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 uh, the, the real problem with Mercury. is much more tricky because the eccentricity of Mercury yeah. is moving. It's making like that, go up and down. So if you look at this figure, say, ah, okay. Uh, Merc uh, okay, uh, let us look here, the Caesar. Okay, Mercury is trapped, but the eccentricity decreases, the figure changes to there, and the Mercury escapes. Okay, uh, uh, it's enough here, 0 0.2, the, the position here, it will escape uh, the, the, when the eccentricity comes to close to 0 0.1, and it comes, Mercury, Mercury will escape. And it escapes and it goes to, to, to synchronous and does not come back. Because the, 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 the derivatives are always negative here, so it will be always moving to the left. So we use this to determine the value of gamma for Mercury. Okay? Uh, it's an inverse problem. Okay. Because uh, we, we, we solve the problem in the other way. Because uh, we don't know a priori which is the viscosity of Mercury and then which is the relaxation, uh, relaxation factor of the Mercury. Okay, if I continue and I take harder bodies like the Moon or Titan, okay, the situation becomes much more uh, full of the uh, possibilities. Uh, ev for every problem, we will have uh, a different figure so we can analyze the tiles of, of it. So, in the case of Darwin theory, always the evolution was leading to the, 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 the synchronous solution or close to the synchronous solution and we got always we get always a super synchronous solution after some time. If I let the system evolve, it will fall to the synchronous sol solution. In, in the cryptide theory, theory, now I can have this possibility if gamma is very large, but in the case of stiff bodies, when gamma is small, I have different possibilities appearing. Uh, it's important to say that this kind of solutions are also found in the paper by Correa et al. in 2013. Okay, so now let, let us cons let's consider now only the case of synchronization, <coughs> only the case in which the body goes uh, to this solution here, okay? This crossing here, the crossing close to zero. Ah, one important thing, look now. This solution now is always synchronous, it's no longer super synchronous as before. 
uh, at least graphically I cannot distinguish between the red curve and the, 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 the dashed axis there. So I have a super synchronous solution, always in case of Darwin theory. I have a super synchronous solutions in the case of uh, gaseous bodies. But when I go to stiff bodies, the solutions become the synchronous solutions become truly a synchronous solution, or at least very, very close to a synchronous solution. These are the differences between this theory and Darwin theory. Okay. So let us let us see how the, the body approaches the, 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 the how the body approaches the, the synchronization. Okay, here are a, a, a series of uh, now now I will, uh, the other were kind of phase plots just to see uh, to understand qualitatively what is happening what was happening. Now uh, here I have real uh, solutions from numerical integration, and what happens is this. Look. The body, uh, I, I, I start with the body rotating uh, much faster than the, the, the synchronization. Well, what happens? It, it comes like that, tending to synchronization. And at least this one that I am showing remains synchronous after some time. But. If the, if, if the body is too stiff, if the gamma is very small, for instance here, uh, this quote, these numbers here are the logs of n divided by gamma. If I have a four orders of magnitude of difference between gamma and n, and the gamma very small, it does not do like that. It comes, okay, and it starts oscillating around the equilibrium. Okay, there is a force and vibration that is induced by the time, okay, in uh, in stiff bodies. Okay, if I, if I, if I, if the orders of magnitude are closer, like here, three, okay, this is less. The amplitude becomes smaller, at least in normalized normalized variables, and. If I am in the case of the, 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 the gaseous bodies, I follow the blue line. Then I have, in the case of gaseous bright bodies, I have in the blue line, so the equilibrium is a little bit above the horizontal axis. The equilibrium is super synchronous. Okay, I start with a, a body moving faster, but I can start with a, a, a one whose rotation is slower. Okay, they are shown. Uh, the curves coming from down, they will exactly coincide with the others coming from above. In fact, I can, I can represent this oscillation in these cases by, uh, uh, we can, okay, the equation is, uh, is, not, is not friendly, but we can try uh, approximations and we can uh, decompose in Fourier series and uh, make it an integration. And uh, we can take this approximation in, in which the, the, the frequency is a constant plus an amplitude times a, a trigonometric term, uh, whose period is exactly the period of the orbital motion. And what we see is that. Uh, when I, I, I change the values of gamma, okay, first we have, uh, in this corner I have uh, gaseous bodies. B0 is more or less constant. B0 will be the, the 6 NT square that, I have, that we find in the theory, in, in Brouwer theory, in, Brown, uh, in Darwin theory, okay? But when the, the body is becoming stiff, uh, it starts decreasing, okay, and goes to zero. So uh, the, 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 the oscillation, the center of the oscillation, tends to the, tends to the origin as gamma tends to zero. And the amplitude of the oscillation, which was completely negligible in the case of the the the, the gaseous bodies, okay, it will have a plateau here. It will be well visible in these cases. Okay, we will, we will listen to talk uh, 
information about this in several, in, in several cases uh, in the communications of uh, Fologne uh, this week and, uh, and next week, and I will show one also. So, in the limits, in the limit on the left side, I have omega equal to n plus 1, 6 e squared. Darwin. So, in Gaussian's bodies, I have exactly the same behavior as in Darwin theory. Okay? Darwin theory with lacks proportional to distance. So, uh, canonical Darwin theory, not can modify Darwin theory. And in the other side, I have a Fluinsky Rene uh, possibility in, in which, the, in the final state, omega equal to n with an oscillation, okay, uh, what the limited oscillation is not considered. But uh, besides this, we have an oscillation as I have shown you. Okay, and what happens with, uh, before I tell you what happens with stars, uh, here are the two examples that we have studied. One is the this, this star Coro 15b. Coro 15b is a star that has a planet around it, which is not exactly a planet, but a, a, a finite star, a brown dwarf. It's very, a, a very big mass. The mass is 60 tri 63 times the mass of Jupiter. Another one here, KL1b, also has a mass 27 times the mass of Jupiter. What, what we see? This is what we see from the observations. The orbital period and the star rotation are practically the same. Aqui, here, the orbital period 1, 2, 1, 7, the star rotation 1, 2, plus 3, 4, 8, but there is one sinus i that's unknown in this case. Uh, uh, so uh, we also have two, two numbers that are very close one to the other. So we are, we, we are seeing here two examples of, of bodies whose rotation has been synchronized by the tides due to a very, to, to a very heavy companion. Okay, in, in the two cases, it's a brown dwarf. Important point. These are the stars of type F. Uh, why I, I go in this detail? I go in this detail because the stars type F are very quiet stars. Okay, the stars uh, are very quiet stars. They don't have big activity. So they are very powerful stars. So uh, these are the, the results. Now, other stars are not like this one. Look at the sun, for instance. Uh, the sun started, like the other stars, from a big cloud that has been contracting up to become a very small object. So what happens with angular moment in this situation? Uh, if it is the, the, the ballerina, how to say, the dancer, okay? When, when the moment of inertia goes to zero, the speed increases. So when the star is born, in general, it is even a little bit unstable because the rotation is much, much faster. So uh, the rotation of a typical ro initial rotation, a typical star <coughs> after the formation of the star is complete, is one period of the order of, of around one day, okay, order of or, order of magnitude, because this contraction makes the, 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 the rotation speed increase too much. Which is the period of rotation of the sun today? 28 days. Why? Why the sun has now 28 days? Because the sun is an active star. What is happening with the sun? Okay, you have had an eclipse uh, two or three days ago, and uh, uh, several, several, the TV, uh, internet, everything showing the beautiful uh, fires coming out from the sun. Okay, uh, this, 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 this things that coming out from the sun. This is matter. This is matter that is being ejected. This matter is rotating with the star before, so every time. They start every time the sun eject, uh, ejects a, a, a large quantity of mass. This quantity of mass carries with it angular momentum from the star. So the star is, is going to slow, is slowing down. 
So in general, when you start like this um, with five, five gigabit, billion years of age, has a period like <coughs> this, about 20 days, 25 days, 30 days, sometimes even more. It, it becomes, a, it, it gets a slow rotation. So if you want to study G stars, we have to take this into account. And to take this into account, I have to, to introduce a law, a law that we get from astrophysicists. We do not need to discuss the tiles of it <coughs> now. We get a law from the astrophysicists that says that the, the, the decrease of the velocity is proportional to the cube of the velocity. The decrease of the angular velocity is proportional to the cube of the, the, the angular velocity. And I do the same figures as before. Okay? And I, so I do the same figure as before. In the figures before, it is the dash of the lines. No? The dash of the lines cross exactly the, 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 the arc the the strike in this case. I am taking, taking uh, uh, a, a gamma much larger than n. But now, when I introduce this, these curves are displaced to the left. So, I continue having equilibrium points, but now the equilibrium points have velocities smaller than the, the orbital velocity. Remember, for gaseous bodies, I have larger than the, the, the radial velocity. Here you have smaller than the radial velocity. But was it's important is to look at the stars. So, this is a star named at P21b, okay? Uh, 21. 21b is the planet of this star, and this planet is a big Jupiter with four Jupiters as mass. Okay, the red lines, the red lines are simulations of the rotation period of star. Since we do not know how this star was rotating, uh, at the beginning of the simulation, okay, we explore a lot of initial conditions. You don't pay attention to, to, to fix one. What is interesting is that here is the orbital period, how it evolves, and this is <coughs> the, 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 what is expected for the, the rotation of the star, and this is the observed value. So I am observing that indeed, in the, in the case of this star, uh, the star has a rotation whose period is larger than the orbital period, and it is larger exactly in the proportion that I expect uh, making the, the, the calculations. Another one, I, I will choose this one, Corot 33. Corot 33 is also a brown dwarf, around one, one, one star Corot. And the same thing, you see, the, 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 the orbital period of the star is increasing because the star is ejecting mass away. The orbital period changes only a small quantity, but the star is decreasing this velocity up to a point in which the torques coming from the tides of the companion does not, does no longer allows the star to be uh, braided. So the star gets an equilibrium value uh, which evolves more or less along this. And again, here is, is the orbital period observed, and here is the, peri the photometric period observed. The rotation period of this star is observed. So the theory allows, okay, Always, in all, in, all, in all tidal theories, we don't know the value of the relaxation factor. So we have to choose the best relaxation factor. But if we choose this, this relaxation factor, uh, 55 uh, seconds minus 1, we get exactly the, the, observation, the observational results uh, using the, the creep tile theory, plus the model for the, 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 the breaking of the star. Okay, I need to drink two minutes, not five. Okay. okay. <laughs> two minute break. <laughs> okay.
Continue. Well, I want to know what happens to the orbit of the, 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 the planet, the orbit of the second body around the first one. And then I use Lagrange variational equations. So something that is standard, nobody has disputed them. So I use these two equations. The equivalent, I can use Gauss equations. The same remark of yesterday. If I have two bodies interacting, if I consider the forces in one over the other, I have to consider the reaction. Okay? It's mandatory to consider the reaction. And if when I consider the reaction, I have always to introduce in this equation uh, this factor 1 plus n over n, 1 plus the mass of one divided by the mass of the other, 
times the potential, the, the potential that I have uh, presented before. Okay, I can write, I can write the, this, this at length, okay, here. I will not make, uh, make uh, great dissertations about the, 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 what is inside this equation. What I have to, to remember is that I, this, this equation has a periodic part here. So, so I, I know that the, the sigma k here depends on nu. And I have seen that nu makes an oscillation. Okay, that, that, that is a forced vibration. So I make an averaging. This averaging is only following the classical uh, average of, of a function, and I will get the average of the, the variation. And when I when I get the variation, uh, the, the this okay, uh, just just in back, bring back to explain these two pictures. So I have to take into consideration that the the body does not go exactly there; it will be oscillating. The solution will be oscillating around the equilibrium. If I take an example, Titan, okay, I can, I, can, uh, I can see, for example, for this value of gamma, gamma here is 10 to minus 8 second to minus 1, the oscillation goes from year to year, okay? Uh, when when the, the, the body is too, too hard, so too stiff, gamma minus t in 10, this oscillation more or less disappears or becomes very small. And if I go towards bodies which are more, uh, more close to gaseous bodies, then what will happen here is that uh, the, 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 the solution becomes super synchronous. Okay? It's no longer oscillation, oscillating around the origin, but it, it goes to higher values. But I am interested in, in stiff bodies, so I am interested in, in this region. So, I take this equation and I take, I take care, uh, I take care, this solution here is for gaseous bodies. Okay, this solution is for gaseous bodies, I forgot to say. Okay, so it's very easy, you have just to take G equal to zero and G equal to zero to get the, the, the averages in the case of Cajun's bodies. And I get a solution like this one. But I have a problem here because this quantity depends on nu. And in the case of stiff bodies, nu is oscillating when the, when the body is trapped in, in, in the resonance. So I have to do numerically, and what I see is the variation of A given by this curve as a function of gamma. Okay, and uh, I am showing what happens for Titan, assuming that Titan is homogeneous, is a working hypothesis. Uh, for more complex models, see later the, 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 the presentation by, by Follonier. Okay, and what we see is that the, 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 the variation of the same major axis has two maxima, one here at three, and a minimum, a kind of saddle in this point. Okay, uh, 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 the real Titan is more or less around here. So uh, the value that is given here is in astronomical units per day. So is is a kind of uh, uh, is values that are of the order of the values observed, not for Titan but for uh, other satellites. For Titan, this value has never been measured. And I can also look what happens with the eccentricity, and the variation of the eccentricity is very small because Titan is already in a very, very in a world close to circular. And again, I have a figure of this kind. Dissipation. Well, what is the dissipation? Uh, what is the dissipation uh, inside the body? Well. This is, this is a difficult matter. There are plenty of models 
there are plenty of models. Uh, we assume that uh, inside the body, the body is behaving uh, with some kind of rheology, and then we can study uh, how energy is uh, uh, there, is, is, is generated inside the body, and make the integration of the body, etc., etc., etc. It's a very complicated but correct way of working. However, I am lazy. Okay, to do that. What I, I know? I know the, the whole energy of the system, I am not looking at the rotation of the second bot. I am taking the second bot like if it was a, a point. The only sources of the energy are the orbital energy and the rotation energy. Okay? If, after some time, the orbit changes, the rotation changed, so I have a new value of the energy. If this energy is smaller than it was before, what happened with it? Or better, we'll put the question in the other way. Can this energy be larger than it was at T0? No, because it, how? How the system will get energy to increase this mechanical energy? There is no way. Okay, there is no way of of, 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 of making energy in the system. The system may not lose energy. It cannot mechanical energy. It cannot gain energy. It cannot uh, the energy cannot increase. So if I look at the decrease of the energy, I know how much has been dissipated inside the body because also. The only way I know for dissipating the energy is the transformation of the mechanical energy in heat inside the body. Okay? And so, and so, I, I, I dissipation is given by the loss of orbital energy and the loss of rotational energy, the sum of both. I neglect small variations associated with the, the moment of inertia and the shape of the body. They exist, but they are at least one order of magnitude, or even more than one order of magnitude, smaller than those ones. So, let us do it analytically before. Okay, to do it analytically, we will just take the leading terms. Okay, we will not take, take the world series. I will just take the first term of the series. Okay, so uh, I, I computed the total energy and the total energy, so I, I will take the, 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 the I take, uh, I, I have shown you the equation that gives the variation of the velocity of rotation. Okay, I, I, will, I multiply the velocity of rotation by the moment of inertia, and I have the, 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 the variation of the, the, of the, 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 the rotational energy. Uh, it's uh, E, uh, moment of inertia, derivative of uh, moment of inertia, uh, uh, velocity, derivative of the velocity, okay? Like EA, well, one half of mv squared of the, the, the other motions. So the derivative will be mv v dot, okay? So in the rotation is moment of inertia, velocity, angular velocity of rotation times angular velocity of rotation dot. So, at the angular acceleration. Uh, the orbital motion. The orbital motion, we know that the energy in the orbit is mu over 2a. Uh, G, uh, sum of the masses, divided by 2 times the same major axis. So, I can make a correlation between the variation of the same major axis and the variation of the energy of the, in the orbit. I saw both. And I get this equation here. But I, I, I just keep the leading terms in order to avoid a lot of algebra that would not help here. OK. What is interesting to see here is that this quantity sigma 2 sigma 0 is defined. It is this one, 2 times nu times gamma, etc. So I have here omega minus n, and I have here nu. Nu is the same dual of frequencies, 2 omega minus 2 n. So I have omega minus n here, and in fact, 
2 times omega minus n here. So this, this by this, no matter if this is larger or smaller, will be positive with a minus here, the result, the result is negative. So we see that no matter what is happening, mechanical energy is being lost by the system. Okay, the, 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 the mechanical energy is being lost and is being transformed in heat inside the body. Sorry, do the other terms, uh, the neglected terms, uh, can change uh, the... No, physically cannot change. Okay. For K different from zero? Huh? For K different from zero? Uh, no, you, you, can take an, uh, you can take a larger approximation, no problem. The result is, must be always negative. It's not negative. Put, <laughs> put your calculations on the garbage, they are wrong. Okay? <laughs> they, they cannot be uh, different. Okay. I can do the same in the Darwin theory. In the Darwin theory, I, have, I, can, I, can, I can compute the dissipation exactly in the same way. So uh, here we appear the, 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 the leg epsilon zero of the, the that is introduced by hand in the equation of diary. This epsilon zero is an ad hoc quantity. Uh, sorry, here is not epsilon zero. Is an, this is the, the obliqueness of the body. Epsilon zero here times omega minus n. The same mathematics. So epsilon zero also is proportional in Darwin theory to omega minus n. So you have omega minus n squared, a positive quantity, a negative number here, exactly as before. But if, if I compare, this is a this is form important because I can compare it with the formula that I have obtained in the previous slide, with this one. I can compare that form with this one. And when we do it, we see that the epsilon zero of the, the, the Darwin theory is equal to a function of the, 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 the a function of the, the relaxation factor. So we can relate the two the two uh, coefficients, okay, through uh, through this formula. Uh, it's, it, this is important because uh, people working on, on on dissipation like to use a quantity they call Q which is the inverse of epsilon zero. So this, this is a heuristic, this is not an exact thing. This is just looking to equations and making the comparison. This is just a heuristic uh, uh, transformation of the parameters used in this theory with the parameters used in Darwin theory. Either the epsilon zero or like many people likes, the quality factor Q. If I take the exact equation, I come back to, to the example of Titan. If I come back to the example of Titan and I make the integral <coughs> equations, uh, sorry, uh, one step before. Uh, look, this quantity Q so is related to gamma by this equation. Look, this is, this is something of the kind x plus 1 over x, one, one, one quantity plus the inverse of the quantity. So in a log-log plot, this has exactly this v-shape, OK? This, this is exactly this v-shape, and it is symmetrical with respect to, to the value nu over gamma equal to 1. This is very interesting because this v-shape is the one that is obtained when we are studying the, 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 the mechanic of, of bodies, and we study the mechanic of bodies using some models. So this is the Maxwell model. In the Maxwell model, I have here a spring and a damper here. So I have these two things acting simultaneously, a damper okay, and a spring. The mechanics, the dissipation of the system, is given exactly by an equation of this type. It is exactly given by a, a, an equation of this type. So I get for for the, when, when I make the relationship between Q and this quantity, I get exactly something that reproduces a Maxwell law. This is important for something that I will discuss later. Uh, but. I have to pay attention to, to, to call your attention for the following. 
uh, I should have, uh, okay, I, I forgot saying is this, when new difference of zero. I am looking not at the case where the bodies are trapped, but where the bodies are freely rotating, uh, they are not in the equilibrium situation. They, they are not in the equilibrium situation. Okay, so I have this figure. And, uh, okay, this is the log-log. And the log-log plot uh, is more difficult to do things physically. Okay, so uh, here is the same figure, but not, but taking a, a non log scale, a, normal, a natural scale on the vertical. Um, what we see there, look, this is seeing the following. Né? The V shape here becomes something like a, a, a bell curve. Okay? So, when the rotation is much far, much larger than the, 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 uh, the mean motion. Okay? So, I will have, I will be, I will be, Sorry, the, 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 the rotation is much larger than the relaxation factor. Okay, so the, the, I am close, things go to zero in both sides. When the body is rotating much farther, okay, I, I have this normal. If it's rotating too, too fast, okay, the, the, the interaction is smaller and the, the, the response is smaller and the the dissipation is very small. But uh, when it's going breaking, okay, going to the, to the thing, what will happen is that the, this quantity nu is going to zero. Uh, I, 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 I have to come from right to left. This quantity nu is going to zero, so I go to, I go to zero. This is a problem. And the other problem is not a problem. This is just you know, what happens in it. But in this side, when it goes to zero, I took only the leading terms. Okay? So I, I cannot believe in it. If I want to know what happens in this situation, when the frequency goes very close to zero, I have to consider a larger number of terms. When I consider a larger number of terms and I make the integration, I get this figure. Again, for lighter. Okay? We have for values of the, 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 <coughs> the smaller in this, in this plot, a, very si a curve is very similar to the, 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 the Maxwell curve. But then it, it, it starts deviating from the Maxwell curve and makes this bump again. So I will have again. A variation here which is more or less linear but displaced to the right. So we have a behavior in, in, in the dissipation which is not similar but which has some features that remind, they are reminiscent of what has been uh, used, what has been assumed, adopted by the Freemans and, and the Lyde of having a dissipation which is. I have told yesterday an inverse power law with a coefficient of 0.4. Okay? Okay, I don't have the coefficient 1.4, I have coefficient 1, but I get exactly something like the, 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 the inverse power law that they have assumed. Well, with this I finish the, 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 the matter concerning the, the, the unelastic tide. Okay, the, the, the part of the tide that uh, is physically important. I told you that the, 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 the last tide is boring because the, tar the torque is zero and the force is conservative. The, 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 the work on a closed path is always equal to zero. But if I want to, to know the shape of the body, I have to, to look at it again. So I have to put the two together again. And I have to put the two together again and uh, when I put the two together again, I will obtain a form for the, 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 the ellipsoid, okay, 
which is no longer the one that I have used up to now. That was just this part that corresponds to the anelastitide. Now I am adding here what happens with the elasticide, but with, uh, uh, with a small trick. The small trick is the following. If I, if, I, if I look at the hertz, for instance, the lunar tide on the earth, if I compute the lunar tide on the earth, I obtain 1 meter 34 centimeters. But the measurements give only 26. And the, we understand this the following way. This formula is given the, 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 the stretching of the body uh, if it is perfect. The head is not perfect. When it is going, it is, it is going to stretch in the direction of the moon, the moon goes there. Okay? So it has to adjust itself. So uh, this, this adjustment is not, uh, it makes that the, 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 the equilibrium situation of the Hertz will be a little bit smaller than, uh, will be well smaller than, uh, because the Hertz is rotating fast, mainly the rotation of the Hertz is in, involved in this case, it, it's rotating fast, so uh, the adjustment is very slow. So, uh, but this is an ad hoc. In this point, something ad hoc. This lambda is, some, is a quantity that is being introduced ad hoc. Not in the study of the physics of the problem, but in the study of the, 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 the shape <coughs> of the body. This is important because the, the space missions uh, measure the, the, the shape of the bodies, and we can, uh, thanks to Luciano, yes, is indeed, we can have the, 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 the ellipsoid for several satellites, and we can try to, 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 to obtain the values. Okay. So the shape now is defined by the composition of the grip type with a purely elastic type. And we have here, so we're making some, uh, some, uh, some calculations. We can transform sigma zero, only the main term, into a geodetic leg epsilon zero. So this, this is interesting because you see, that even in this case, in, in, the, in, in some cases that we study, in which the sigma zero, remember, sigma zero is nothing but a constant that has been introduced by the integration of a differential equation. Okay? It can take any value. It's the differential equation that says how much it, 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 it which is this value. In general, for the problems we study, this quantity is around 90 degrees. So something around, uh, sorry, uh, something around here, okay? And then what happens? If I have sigma, I have sigma zero in this value, but the e epsilon zero corresponding, so now epsilon zero is the geometric deviation of the, the axis of the ellipsoid, the, it will be small. So uh, this is the reason certainly for which uh, Wayne Darwin included uh, epsilon zero, he, he, uh, one ad hoc lag in his equations, he assumed that this ad hoc lag was uh, a small quantity. He was thinking about this quantity, not about this one. But, uh, uh, okay, he wrote this thing, these things were published. So we see which is the origin of their ideas, if, if they, that doesn't appear in the main paper that he published. <coughs> Okay, uh, <coughs> so if I want to have, if I want to have the, the if I want to have uh, the shape of the body, I have to combine an elastic and elastic type. I have to sum, I have to add both. <coughs> okay. Well, in, in the cryptide theory, I have used this equation, zeta dot equal minus gamma zeta minus rho. Okay? The elastic type is just rho, because the elastic type is the, 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 the answer, uh, the, the, the body is responding uh, without delay. But, as I told, I introduced a dot, a factor lambda, to take into account some slowness 
in the in the stretching of the body. Okay, I can I can do, I can study. I can make the same study I have, I have introduced here for this body, the complete body, not only the elastic type. It's enough to introduce a new variable, this one. Instead of having an equation for zeta, I can add lambda rho and I have a, a, new, a new big great z, uh, which is the sum of both. Okay, uh, I will take the equations, I will change. And what is, what is interesting in this case is that when I, do, when I give it, I get exactly this equation. I know that some people are not seeing, but it will appear <coughs> in the next slide again. Okay, and you get exactly this. This is just an equation for this quantity, which is the sum of these two quantities from an equation that was given for zeta. Okay, this is the equation that I have in the book. This is the equation that has been obtained in the previous slide. Okay? But if I look at the paper by uh, Bouet, Correa, et al., in which they introduce a, ma a Maxwell model, okay? uh, I have told you uh, when I showed the equations for the variation of the, the, the velocity of the rotation that they go to see the results there. It is the same results as myself. But it's, if it, it's obvious. Look, this is just a matter of adjusting some constants. Okay, not exactly the equivalent, but almost equivalent. So, they, their pure Maxwell model is this, and the model that we obtain with the creep equation. If we transform it, adding also the 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 the, the elastic type is an equation exactly of the same kind as that one. So it's not strange that the two theories give uh, almost the same results. Okay, and with this I finish this talk. Uh, the references for this are in three papers that are uh, posted in Astro PH, are archived Astro PH, and the numbers are given here.